This is 99% craps. Five ten, high ten. There's the number. I'll take the full odds on the ten, 200 on the hard way. The limit on all the numbers, 250 on the 11. Thank you very much. Say, you played this game before. Just once. Welcome to the Red Eye Gamblers podcast. High above the second largest city, west of the Mississippi. Two chronic craps players, talking craps, playing craps, thinking craps. This is 99% craps. Coming up on 99% craps, our May craps trip in Louisiana. Heading to Lake Charles and then on to New Orleans. We'll talk strategy on the way to Lake Charles and what happened on the way out to New Orleans. But first, the man, the myth, the legend, Shotgun's back. Wednesday, June 15th, 2022, episode 49. The Red Eye Gamblers present 99% Craps. Well, good evening, crap shooters. We are back on the road, and uh, when I say we, I mean we. You get to use the royal plural, we, us. I'm back. Welcome back, sir. Welcome back. Thank you. It has been uh, 10 months or so since I have uh, been on this trip. I uh, got one of those stupid jobs that uh, required my attention for a while, so this is my first vacation uh, since I started. And uh, looking forward to it, yeah, my first, uh, well, I would say my first trip away from the casino, well that's not true, we're going to the casino and then to, uh, then to uh, New Orleans actually. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, getting away. Um, but also, I'm looking forward to getting back to the casino because it has been uh, about probably four or five weeks now since I've been back. So I'm itching, itching to get back. So, but also excited to have you back, sir. Well, it's good to be back. I am. I'm excited to be going somewhere too because uh, between my couch and my job, I was getting a little bored. <laughs> so it's time to get back to uh, some good food, well, some good drinks, and some uh, dice back in my hands. There you go. Well, and, and obviously when we talk about dice back in your hands, uh, you uh, you now know that there's a uh, another table in the uh, sports book, and that uh, it's it's a low limit table. Um, I've heard rumors of this table. Yes. What's your uh, what's what you've been thinking a little bit about how you're going to be playing this time out? Well, I have, and, and, uh, and I definitely did not even consider playing on a 5 or a $10 table, really. I don't know. I think this time it's going to be more of an attitude of I'm going to go in as a gambler, not a craps player, because it's been so long since I've played or practiced that I probably, uh, well, I just want to hit it hard and walk away. Well, you know. I, that's the longer I've been, I mean, the, the more I've gambled, the more I'm realizing that you know, if I can spend less than, you know, I say two hours is my limit, and then it's like, well, if I can spend, if I can make my money in less than an hour, you know, and then we always talk about, oh, well, if you make your money in the first 30 minutes, well, now that's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it's, no, I'm, it's getting in, hitting, and leaving. Yeah, well, I mean, honestly, we are going to be getting to Golden Nugget probably, you know, in the next half hour to. 45 minutes it's just by the time we get checked in and, and you know cleaned up and get back down to the floor it's going to be nine o'clock and the craps tables are going to be full so we're probably going to go have dinner i'm guessing yeah 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 yeah. no the the typical play on friday nights is uh no tables, tables don't open up until after 11 so realistically yeah we're having dinner we're having drinks uh doing other things besides craps so I'm figuring, you know, by the time we go to sleep, wake up in the morning, and then we need to head out because we have a, a little bit of a schedule. So we're only going to have a couple hours in the morning to be yeah. on the craps table. Well, yeah, so. we, have, we really only have uh, time for one session. So it fits into how I'm thinking of just kind of coming in and, 
starting with much larger bets and just playing a couple of a couple of turns and maybe just walking away and you know no i i like it it's it's a completely different strategy and style but you know you've got a got a plan and then you'll, you'll stick to it it'll, it'll be really exciting yeah, I had recently watched a guy who went to every casino on the strip and played $100 on black on a roulette table. And I was like, I like that idea. Now, of course, we're not doing one of those trips. But we have done those trips where we've stopped at 20-plus casinos. Yeah. But if we're not doing that this trip. But I was like, you know, walking in, put you know, putting up 120, 6 and 8, and, you know... If it hits in the first two or three turns, press it to 300 and then give it a few rolls. And if not, pull it down. But, you know, if you could hit a couple couple of uh, jams like that, you yeah. know, instead of trying to grind it out and literally doing trying that once or twice and, you know, be, be okay with the idea of I could lose $240 or if the dice go my way, then maybe I can get lucky and actually hit some and, you know... No, it's it's definitely bringing out the big bat. No, if I, if I and if I hit it at three hundred, I would definitely go. I would definitely do a regression down to you know a pre. I don't know. I'd have to think about where how I, far I would want to go down. But I would. I would say table middle. Yeah, maybe that far down. No, just, and then just, just let just it make, and then let it ride. That, get that in your head, so we, you don't have to think about it. Yeah. It's it's oh, it doesn't need to be percentage. Just. Go all the way down to table minimum, everything's paid for, and then you just start over. Well, honestly, how many times do you think if you pressed once, if you started at 120, hit it once, and pressed it to 300 uh, by kicking in 40 more, yeah. would, if you hit again and got 350, 50. I mean, I would you're just kind of done with that player, right? Just come down all, totally. Why even leave $24 up there on a $12, 6 and 8? After just winning 350, plus another 120 initially, so actually that's 470. Why even consider going back up with 24? I mean, well, that's the whole thing of. It's kind of like feeding me a filet mignon, and then and then the next bite say, oh, here's a here's a spoonful of spam. Well, no. Actually, that might not be bad. That's, that's, that might not be the right comparison. I don't like but. I don't like your analogy <laughs> at all. And, and and what's worse is the, my analogy makes makes a little more sense because it's like if you have that filet mignon but you don't finish it you're gonna take it home with you though right yeah but it won't be as good well but that's okay it's still your filet <laughs> okay well the food analogies did not work however uh, 470 would be a pretty good lick on 240 investing. yeah no and that, but that's the thing I mean is it good if it hits more than twice or more than three times or more than four times, you know, it all depends on the shooter. You know, if the shooter's got some, some rhythm to them, then, you know, may, maybe they might be good for another two or three. I mean, we've seen five numbers get hit, or a number, oh, get, sure. hit, a number get hit five times. Sure. Uh, well, we've seen sixes and eights get hit. Uh, six times to get the repeater bonus, right? And I've seen after some after somebody making a big win on a table, getting paid off, that the next the roller, the next the shooter, the next roll is a seven. Yep. I've seen that a lot of times. No, so. I mean, almost every time after somebody hits the ATS, what's the first thing I do? Turn off my bets. Sure. When they go to, because some places pay it off as it hits, and some wait till afterwards. Yes. Um, but the ones that pay it off during the hand, uh, which is Lake Charles, which is Lake Charles, they do pay it off. I turn my bets off usually for the first one or two rolls after that, after the payout, because if it's a lot, you know, like if it's only one or two people and they only had like two dollars on it and they get seventy, then okay, not a big deal. But I think if the shooter sees hundreds of dollars going out and he didn't get a part of that. They get upset about it, and I think it hurts their role for the next hit. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Maybe. But I'm definitely going to go in and try to just be more aggressive. Uh, you know, since I haven't been in 10 months and I have yeah. been working, I actually have a bankroll this time, and it is not scared money. Scared money don't make no money. A scared man don't make no money. 
so I am going to, uh, I, I, I keep going back to the lady that we saw when we were in Biloxi at um, Bel Rivage. Bel Rivage. And she walked up to the table and she played 60 across or something like that. Yep. Uh, not on the 4 and 10 though, did she? She just played the inside? Uh, no, actually it was 90. 90 on the um, it was, inside. It was, it was, no, it was 90. Just like, actually it was 90 on Sisters. It was just 90 on the on the 6 and 8. Oh, so she just had the 6 and 8 Yeah, because that paid 105. Yeah. And she was getting a, that, I think, I don't know if she was tipping a nickel or, no, she wasn't tipping at all. Because that was what the dealer they said. They said she never tipped, I yeah. remember that. But she walked up to the table and she literally played for 15 minutes and doubled her what yeah. her oh more than doubled because if she only started with 90 uh, up that's only 180 for a six and an eight total yeah. i mean she and might have she bought in with, for 500 maybe yeah but she definitely but then yeah she quickly quickly made six seven eight hundred i don't remember exactly what it was but it was a chunk and she colored up and then she didn't tip and she walked away and they were like yeah she does that all the time she either hit, makes it or loses it yeah. And I think just because the fact that I haven't been gambling and haven't really been thinking about craps, haven't been practicing. We're talking about practice, man. I mean, how silly is that, man? We're talking about practice. Um, I'd like to try that approach. I'd like to. Yeah, I, I like the idea. I mean, we've talked, we've played like that at home. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's doable. Um, yeah, it just depends on how much discipline you have, and you know how easy is, how easy is it going to be for you to uh, to turn those bets off, or uh, or you know do you leave them hanging one bet too long, or one 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 throw too long? I'll be honest with you. As soon as the thought pops into my head, I usually go no, leave it on for one more roll, and then the I mean, good part of my conscious goes no, no, no. If you're saying this now, turn it off now, and I'll turn it off yeah. then. And usually, they, they it was the right move to make. Well, realistically, are you looking to press and then win, or are you planning on winning and regressing? No, I would like to press once and then hit and then. Okay. Yeah. So, are you thinking? 66 I don't I don't know that I need to do 66 you you like the 66 plus 7 to 150 but yeah. um, I can do 60 plus 70 plus 20 <laughs> <laughs> to get to the same number um, I don't know I hadn't I hadn't really thought about that I was it's either that or you know were you gonna do 90 or we can do 120 well see the problem with 90 is okay if you do well, or just do one how many times are you gonna do it are you gonna do it once and do 120s yeah because if you do 90 then you get 105 so what are you gonna press it to 150 yeah and then 150 well, so you're get you're, but you're see if you're at 150 you get 175 you're already at three 325 you keep, you keep a quarter and get 300 Yeah, but at 150. <laughs> yes, I don't know. At one, yes, at 150. I don't think 90 is is the number that works. I think it's either going to be 60 or 120. Yep. Then the question is, if I do 120, is it the six and an eight, or is it just the six, or is it just the eight? I don't know. You eight know, seems the, to be your number. Six time, seems to be more my number. The times that I do singles is when one of them is a point. Yeah. And then so it's like, okay, I'll double up on the one because it's the only one available to hit multiple times. You know, that I'm going to get paid on. Yeah. So that would be, that's that's one of my considerations when I when I make a bigger bet on the six and eight is if the other one's a point. So that would make sense for your, you know, 120. Yeah, true. Okay. Yeah, that's not a bad point. But then again, you could always just, I mean... There's a ton of times where I'm just playing the eight. I mean, you could just play the six for 120. You know, keep it out there for five rolls and turn it off. Well, and then when I start thinking about that, well, then I start honest, thinking about if I'm going to put 120 up, I could play uh, inside for 110, oh, yeah. 110. And then press on the first 
two hits and try to see if you can get lucky and then come down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's all we. I mean, wow. obviously, we know all kinds of different things we can do. Well, I mean, that, well, so so in addition to that, um, odds are very good we're going to be playing at the roll to win table. Well, and you you always and so say fives and nines hit pretty well. And, and well, and, and realistically, that is the one table where you can turn everything on and off at the yeah. touch of a button, as long as the time, as long as you're you know paying attention in your time limit. No, that's actually true. You know, on the bigger oh, they moved up the time limit. Oh, really? Again? It's, it's ten seconds. Oh, yeah, wow! It's really speeding you gotta the game. You got to be on your toes. That's speeding the game along all of the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to, for you to see what's uh, the little the little idiosyncrasies that are different from the casino for not being here for ten months. Is that yeah. what we said? Yeah, about ten months. Damn. Hell, back in the day, we that's we would be in Vegas within ten months of each other. The good old days. Vegas was just an airplane ride away. Right. Yeah, no, so we opted to uh, to not do Vegas still and uh, instead we're gonna jump to uh, to New Orleans. And so uh, in continuation of this trip to Lake Charles, we are uh, gonna go have a trip and uh, keep going to uh, New Orleans. So we'll be there for three days yeah, and uh, staying across the street from the Harris. So we'll be able to uh, play at Harris and give you a, a good solid report on New Orleans uh, from uh, being there for three days. Well, and, and the weather actually might not be that great. So we might end up having to stay inside and yeah, casinos are have, good places to hang out. Yeah, casino has a lot of uh, roof and uh, coverage. And uh, oh, they're freezing now. The casino is freezing. Remember? Yeah, I did bring a long sleeve shirt, but I did yeah. not bring a jacket. That's but. the one thing to remember once we get towards summertime: is the casinos have their AC kicking, so it gets freezing. But uh, but yeah, anyway, that will uh, that'll be a part of the following episode is our uh, gambling trip to uh, New Orleans. But excited about that, but really excited to uh, actually get you back in the saddle and get you on the table. And uh, I'm hoping you uh, have this uh, you know rookie luck. Well, I was gonna say I might just have to like really break all the rules, like maybe like drink at the table and. Uh break all the etiquette I can I, and just try to roll, you know, and then maybe I'll have like a hundred roll uh, session. Well, I, I just know, you know, if I don't bet on it, you'll, you'll, <laughs> well, I'll you'll have a great it. hour. Because <laughs> whenever I do bet on it, you don't hit it. So I think that's maybe what I'll do is I won't play so much. That way you've got more things to hit. I appreciate that. Yeah. But, but yeah, man, I'm excited. Um, you know, I'm uh, probably just going to go with the flow. Uh, just depends on what table we're at, what's what's available. And, well, and, uh, and we're staying at La Burge, but I definitely want to hop over to Golden Nugget. Yeah, too. We'll, we'll jump over there. But and that's the thing: if we're playing this different style, where we're just going to make a couple of big bets and then leave, yeah, I mean, I could, we can we can find maybe room on a table to do that. Yeah. You know, but then again, like I said, after 11, everything does start to open up because it gets later. Uh, and uh, so we could either make a couple bets tonight or we can do that in the morning too and then uh, then we'll be on our way from there so but uh, but yeah I guess uh, that's gonna be it for our uh, for our trip here we are uh, on the approach I'm uh, getting ready to take the uh, exit to get on the bridge so, uh, oh, and definitely my first time the dice do get in my hand, I'm going to have to play the ATS. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, no, like I said, looking looking forward to seeing uh, how uh, how lucky uh, we might be. Um, I guess the, good, the other good thing to note is uh, Full Moon is not happening this weekend. It happened last weekend. That was the big blood moon. That was beautiful, too. It was awesome. Uh, but we weren't gambling, so this weekend um, we don't have to worry too much about uh, that interfering with our uh, our play. So 
We'll just note that again. No full moon. Alrighty, folks. Thanks for uh, sticking with us. Uh, hang on to us for a little more. We will be uh, right back out on the flip side. Yes, sir. We'll see Ad you then. Adios. Cheers. Alrighty, good morning, crap shooters. We are on our way out. Just leaving the uh, La Berge Casino after a uh, successful morning session, actually. Almost too easy, to be honest with you. Well. And a little too quick. I you really. say easy, that was the problem. And I didn't want to leave when we did, but we did. Yeah, no. We. Uh, we stuck to our rules. I stuck to my rules. And uh, basically just had uh, had one session this morning. You say one session, but it really was just one roll. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're waiting for the dice to come around to you and then it's your shot, or, you know, are you going to wait for them to come around again? No, I mean, that's why we left, because when we first got to the table, there was only one guy there, and then we went yeah. to the other no, side. This, this was a prime example of, okay, so this morning we got up and we, were tr we walked over to the Golden Nugget, you know, and, and went to go see if we could get on a table there. Yeah, because that table's actually the size I like to yeah, shoot it's a, on. Yeah, it's a 12-foot table, and they just had one table going, and it was actually $15, but uh, it, was it was, they had 12 people at the table. At least. Yeah, so six aside, and uh, there were there were a couple of guys there that had big chip stacks, and they were playing on the dome. If you only knew the power of the dark side. And uh, looked like they were playing. Uh, you know, one guy was on the don't pass. Another guy was uh, having uh, looks like don't come bets with odds. And uh, you know they had. You know, the one guy had $300 at risk, and, you know, the other guy probably had 100 150 So, they were the only two with uh, big stacks, and they were all green. And uh, everybody else was losing. <laughs> yeah, which so, means it was a tough table to be yeah. playing at. Well, and that was the other thing, is when we were there, you know, one half of the table lost, and we were thinking they were going to leave the table, and instead they brought money back out, and they bought back in. Yeah, so they put 500 bucks back in, you know, so I was like, ah, shit, they're going to stay for a while, so. So we definitely left there, uh, or, you know, watched watched them for a while, and then left uh, to go back to uh, La Berge. And, you know, we walked around this morning, and there were openings at the uh, at the roll to win table. The roll to win table was $5 uh, minimum, and uh, there was uh, three, four spots open at the at the, uh, at the Yeah, table. there was, there was. You know, um... And um, so there was that option. And then uh, they had one table going, and uh, earlier this morning it was $25. And uh, um, it had, it was like half full. You know, that was about it. And then, uh, <clears throat> so, but then we walked around, um, and uh, when we came back, it was $15, and there was one person at the table. And so that was when we decided to go ahead and uh, jump on the table and uh, started playing. And uh, the table was, uh, I guess the dice were at the other end, and it went to one shooter, and then it was my shot. Is that about right? Yeah. That's, well, actually, what was funny was the guy that was next to you on the end, he changed sides. And so that right. took, because he would have been, he would have shot next, but because he moved, he it, it went to you. It went to me. So yeah. So realistically, I didn't bet on anybody else, and I basically shot first. Yeah. You know, and uh, so it was just me and you, and then this other guy at the table, and then during my roll, um, the table pretty much got filled up, um, and I had I had a great roll. I had a great roll. Just uh, basically played uh, um, double odds on my pass line bet. Um, had five dollar tall and small. And then uh, ended up playing eighteen dollars six and eight. And I did fifteen dollar five and nine. Yep. And then we had uh, we had dollars out for the crew. And uh, I started to roll. And I basically uh, was hitting fives and nines. Hey, you were killing the fives and, and nines. And threes. I know I hit three on the come out maybe once or twice. 
Um, but I was able to get three points. So I hit my five as my point. I hit my uh, four and my ten. Um, and so I was on single odds on there, but it's nice when you double up on single odds. So, but it was my first roll, so I really wasn't going to risk, you know, too much. But, um, you know, the good part was I rolled long enough that I was able to hit the uh, small. So I got my 175 for the uh, $5 small that I had. And uh, I ended up having about a 20-something roll, we're thinking. Yeah. And uh, it was it was perfect. It was beautiful. I mean, you were you were pressing and and regressing your five and nines. Well, and I had gotten my both bets to a quarter each, and then you hit a point, and then I, and then you the next point for you was four, so I went inside for the minimums, which was sixty six, and. Uh, then you hit a six or an eight, and I jumped both of them to 30. But then you didn't hit it for five or six, seven, eight tosses. So I finally just pulled it down, and I think you hit it twice more, so I would have basically broken even, even if I had left them up. Yeah. But my five and nine definitely were hitting, so that's why I left those up. Yeah, I, I don't know what it was, but yeah, I was hitting fives, and uh, nines were following right after it. Fives definitely more. Uh, nines, yeah. I think you only hit a couple times, but fives you hit like four times. Yeah, no, I, I did. I did good, and then, like I said, I hit three points. You know, it, it's it's nice that I had more on my first point, and I did hit my first point. But it's just, I don't think I'll ever hit the other points. But and I was shooting out of position. Right. You know, this was on the uh, on the left side or on the right side of the table, and I was actually right right two. So I was actually close to being on the hook. And that's actually funny because I've been throwing from that position on my on the table at home. Right. When we when I've been uh, been just tossing. But uh, but yeah, so I I don't know why I had such a good roll. Maybe because I haven't played in a while. I still I bet you would have had a good roll too, no matter what. But so I bought in for a thousand, and. Uh, after I hit my bonus and I hit three points and I didn't bet on any of the shooters. Two, two points. points. Yeah. I did hit the four, ten, and five. You hit the five, ten, and then four was your last point. Oh, and I did hit it. Oh, okay, so just just two points. Okay, so sorry. Anyway, so so two points and a bonus. I'm up two fifty, and yeah. so so at the end of my roll, I'm up two fifty, and I'm like. Huh. Twenty something roll. Nobody's gonna roll that right away. Well, you weren't gonna roll because you were out of position and you didn't want to roll. Well, too, I just didn't big. want to follow that. Well, there's that too. Yeah. So then the question is, is well, do I bet on other people for me to get the dice back, or do I just say, hey, that was our time at the table. I'm up my twenty percent. More than twenty percent. Yeah. So. Well, 25 percent right yeah so that's a positive session and we'll be at uh the new orleans casino later tonight so, and we'll be gambling tomorrow so it's a successful day yeah there was no reason to go back in there and do anything mm -hmm. else no well and then but, we did go by the table at the sports bar yeah so that's the other thing they've uh the hours are for the uh, for the craps table in the Barstool Sports area, um, they're not opening those tables. The, the bars open, and I think the, the sports bar. book, so you can make right. sports bets. But they're not manning a crew. Uh, we went by, so not even not 11 o'clock on the weekends either. So I probably you know two four o'clock maybe. Uh, but they weren't open, so we weren't going to stay. But they were five dollars, even when we showed up last night on Friday, you know, around nine. Going back to the Barstool Sportsbook, so their hours, so they actually open and close. So the gambling that goes on in there, you know, has a start and has a finish, versus the casino is open 24 hours. So, you know. What we've been figuring out is it doesn't. It, it I, on Saturdays it used to open at 11, 
but they didn't have people there at 11 this morning. And when I asked the security girl, she had no idea when the tables were going to open. The two blackjack tables and the craps table that's in the sports book uh, weren't running in the morning. So it sounds like they might not run until, you know, four o'clock or so. Um, and then run until, you know, two, two o'clock, I think is when they shut down. So, um, anyway, so then that means that the $5 option in there with a bonus wasn't available. So, um, so yeah, and then, then realistically they just have the one cash table and then one roll to win inside working. Well, I really did like the, the location of where this bar stool restaurant is. You can literally walk by, look inside to see what the table looks like, and then take maybe 20, 30 more feet, and then you can look into the actual casino where the craps tables are. So they're all right in the same area, which is awesome. Yeah, no, it's 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 a very craps-friendly uh, casino. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've got uh, access points from everywhere. I mean, it's the craps tables are really close to the restrooms. The craps tables are really close to the hotel elevators. You know, it's really close to the sports bar. Uh, technically, it's close to the uh, back door. So when you want to go to the other casino, it's the closest there. You know, the only thing is it's, it's not close to parking, to the garage parking. You know, that's a completely on the other side of the casino. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's now, like I said, now that they added that table, now, you know, they have six tables plus a bubble crafts machine. Yeah, you know, there's still no bubble craps at Golden Nugget. So, but actually, we did go to the Golden Nugget last night, and all their tables were working. Yeah, they were all up and running. Well, they were all up and running, but there weren't people at all of them. Not when we were there. No. Yeah, so they had six tables over there. A couple more fifteen dollars. Yeah, actually, most of them were fifteen. There was one twenty-five dollars. Yeah, one, I think but... it was the other way around. Of, yeah. you know, it was. Uh, Really, uh, mostly fifteen dollars and one twenty-five dollar. So, but um, but one of those fifteen dollars had nobody at it, um, and then there was like three people at, at another one, and then three of the rest of the tables were pretty full, and then the crap list was full. Well, you know, I really wonder how. Uh inflation and the economy right now is really affecting casinos per se because you know i mean that you've got to have extra income to go gamble sure sure and you know with, with gas prices i mean you know fortunately i live three and a half miles away from my job so you know my gas bills aren't that crazy but if you live 35 miles away from your job Oh, it all adds up, yeah. Yeah, that, would add, that, that adds up real quick. So, you know, how is that a Is that why Golden Nugget is running the lower table limits? I don't know. They've been, actually, they've always had lower limits. You know, they, they had a $10 table way before uh, La Berge. Um, You know, La Berge going down to 15 is kind of new. It was at 25 for a long right. time. Right. It was the last time I was there. Yeah. And then the $5 is unheard of. Yeah, now so, they've got two of them. Yeah, but you know the the idea behind the five dollar table in the in the sports book is to get people to know that it's there. Sure. Um, but you know, like I said, I don't, how long is that going to last? Well, now it looks like it might last for a while because they weren't actually. We could have played last night. Yeah. Um, but we opted not to play last night. But it was crowded, you know, like like usual on Friday nights. You know, the casino wasn't crowded, crowded, but the, the but the craps tables are, and uh, they had all all the tables working at both casinos, and they were pretty much all full, other than the Golden Nugget. You know, they basically had two tables that weren't full, but the rest of them, the the four, the rest of the the four of them that are uh, that were remaining were all full, and uh, but then after about 11 o'clock. Then the crowd thins out, and then so yeah, around midnight or so, then we can find spots at the table. But we just opted not to stay up late and uh, instead get up at eight this morning, and that's what we did this morning. And it worked out pretty fair. No, very successful, very successful. So, but that was the thing, and and this is the conversation we have all the time: is if you just get to the casino and you win within your first 15 minutes, do you keep playing? 
Well, we answered that today, didn't we? Well, no, we've answered it many, many, many times. Unfortunately, <laughs> we've un answered we, we it incorrectly. We right, yeah, not with the right answer. <laughs> the incorrect answer is no, stay and play and give it back. Yeah, you know? no, you'll have another good roll. You'll have another 20 roll. Yeah. It'll be right after the 20 roll you just rolled. Because now you're warmed up. You know, and you just hit half of the ATS, so I'm sure you're going to hit the other half at one point. Yeah, you do. Ugh. That's sarcasm, folks. You never do. The dice don't have memory. The dice don't have ears. So, but I will say it, uh, the only reason we're both up is because you're on this trip and uh, we put each other in check and said, yeah, we both hit our goals, so let's stop and... Well, I didn't really have any goals, you know, I mean, I, I just wanted to gamble, but <laughs> I still have, will have plenty of opportunities, so it's no well, big deal. Well, I was going to say, you didn't mind, you know, making your $100 in 15 minutes. Yeah, no, that was, that was fun. Well, and that was actually something I, I was noticing the guys at the other end of the table, because they had just, they were showing up as I was having the roll. Right. You know, and... and I was keeping everything out of my mind as much as possible, but there was actually a handful of people that were buying up, buying in the middle of my roll. And, you know, that's a that's an etiquette thing. That's a superstition thing where you really shouldn't be doing that. But I was trying to keep it out of my head as much as possible. And, but that was the other thing I was noticing. The table was getting filled up with people that had bad karma. And, yeah. You know, people were there with, with bad karma, and, you know... It, I t totally believe in, in craps being a karma game. And if you can manage to get positive karma on that table, then positive things happen. So when this negative karma shows up, then like, all right, we don't need to stay. We can, you know, we'll, we'll, we can gamble later. So session one, success. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so, um, so yeah. So that was that was our trip to uh, to Lake Charles uh, on our trip to New Orleans. So uh, well, we were there. I mean, in Lake Charles, literally for like 12 hours. So I mean, you know, we, we weren't yeah, no, there. We showed up at yeah. Showed up at eight, and then we just left at noon. So 16 hours. Yeah, right? and so uh, so yeah, so uh, now we're. Uh, on our way to uh, to New Orleans, and uh, we'll be staying across from the Harris, and uh, be uh, having a nice little uh, three-day adventure in uh, in New Orleans. So the question is, is how, what will the weather do to us? Um, if I was you guys, I'd be praying for rain, because if it rains, then it means we'll be at the casino longer than we expected. Because there's not much to do in New Orleans when it's raining. Eat, drink, or gamble. And if you can do all of those in the same place, <laughs> then that's got my vote. And the closest place from our hotel to anything is the casino. Well, and it just really depends on how hard it rains. That's true. We did. We are prepared. We did bring umbrellas. So. I didn't. I didn't bring any good shoes. Right. Yeah. No good shoes. But. You know, the last thing I want to do is slip on some uh, cobblestones. But uh, but anyway, uh, I'm excited. I think you know what we're gonna do for the next episode is we'll be able to uh, talk about our gambling adventures at the Harris Casino, and we might see if we can go over to Boomtown. Uh, I've never been over to Boomtown. We've been at the Treasure Chest. So, uh, but. Uh, the other thing is, we have to, if we go to those places, it's kind of like the uh, sports bar. The craps tables don't open up until later in the day. Oh, that's right, because they're smaller casinos. They probably won't be open until 4. Yeah, so they might not. So if we go and want to play craps, we probably need to get there around 5 or 6. So it would be more towards the evening. So maybe we do that on Sunday or Monday, but we leave on Tuesday. Um, so we'll have gambling adventures to talk about. And then uh, also I'll get back into... Uh, a little more of my uh, my history, uh, gambling history, craps history, dice history uh, that I've been uh, kind of playing with, and uh, talk about Bernard Marigny, who's uh, 
you know, some people credit for uh, bringing crops uh, to America and starting it in New Orleans. Well, so, you know, I, I'm not a big history buff, but from the sounds of the things that I've learned from what you've said is the Northeast obviously is going to have the oldest history, but kind of down south, New Orleans is really one of the oldest cities with the longest history. Yeah, no, it's, well, really, it's it was the first port in the Gulf. Right. Um, you know, Biloxi actually started a little, or uh, Mobile, Mobile and Biloxi started a little bit earlier, but uh, there was a concentrated effort to uh, develop New Orleans into a, um, uh, into, into a, a metropolis, into yeah. a, a capital city, and so... Uh, that's why all the focus was there, but uh, but yeah, no, it was it was basically yeah the, you know at, at the time I would think it was it was before the Civil War it was the third largest city in America, you know I think it was New York and then maybe Philadelphia and then Chicago or then um, um, New Orleans uh, New Orleans, but if you think about it yeah I mean anything else that was happening had to happen by boat, uh, they didn't have a highway system they didn't have any of that kind of stuff so if you had a port city that was. That, that was how everybody got there so and then uh, yeah and so so basically gambling was brought to New Orleans um, and by who and so that's what I've been trying to uh, figure out and Bernard is uh, one of those um, uh, key figures theories, yeah. theories. Uh, key figure yes he did like to play craps um, he is known for playing craps and that's the thing He's credited for, for for creating and developing crops, but you know um, I haven't seen the evidence of that yet. I've just seen the stories of people saying it. You know, it's it's more of is it a tall tale, and I want to get behind it. But anyway, I'll we'll be talking more about uh, Bernard Marigny and the history of crops in New Orleans and gambling um, on our next episode because uh, that's what we'll be doing, <laughs> is going to New Orleans. So, anyway, I think that's going to do it for this episode for our Lake Charles trip. Um, it's good to have you back, Shotgun. Well, thank you. And, um, yeah, I guess we will uh, talk to you guys on the flip side for our next episode, which uh, I think happens to be our 50th episode, so uh, yay us. Anyway, appreciate you all for listening. We'll talk to you later. Cheers. Adios. Coming up on our next episode, we're off to New Orleans, eating, drinking, smoking, and gambling. Man, we love it here. The Red Eye Gamblers, thank you for your time and hope you got a little something out of this week's podcast. Here's to rolling sevens on the come out and may your sixes and eights always be hard. Cheers.